Thank you, Ms. McGendron, and welcome to all of our Aragon families and uh, maybe even some friends out there uh, who are joining us. Um, I, my name is Josephine Ho, and I am the senior class counselor. Uh, so tonight we have three awesome presenters, and we are so um, happy that they could join us tonight and be able to give you the most updated information because we know that there's so much um, information which can be somewhat confusing at times. Um, there might be some misinformation as well. So we said, you know what, let's just invite um, a representative from the UC system, from the CSU system, and also uh, from one of our um, uh, private college partners, Loyola Marymount, uh, to come and give us insights into when their systems, their emissions, and maybe any changes um, that has come um, with the upcoming fall 2021. And then after they present, uh, both Mrs. Tzak and I will continue the presentation. Uh, we're going to go in a little bit more in depth that uh, will more so hit on the application itself, the supports that Aragon will be given, giving, and explain the letter of recommendation process for the private schools. So please uh, stay with us. It's gonna be a great night with a lot of information. And I would really suggest maybe having a pen and paper available just to jot down some ideas, um, some information, but of course it is being recorded and we will have this uh, posted on our website. So, uh, without further ado, um, I will uh, now introduce our awesome uh, assistant director from University of California, Berkeley. And I am so sorry, I do not want to <laughs> butcher your name. So if you can um, introduce yourself, that would be awesome. Looks like you might be muted. No, it's okay. Oh, thank you. Okay. Um, hi, everybody. Good evening. My name is Denalyn Malari. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm an assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Admissions um, at the University of California, Berkeley, also called Berkeley, also called Cal, whatever you want to call it, as long as it's nice and it's to my face. Um, just wanted to share with you all some updates about um, just the University of California admissions process and all of those pieces. Um, is it possible for me to share my screen? It should be able to share if you just hit share screen. Okay. Uh, let's see. Right, just a quick change here and forgive me. For some reason, my computer is now deciding to go a little slowly. <laughs> All right, so again, just to share some general information about admission to the University of California, I'll be covering a lot of the updates that have come up. Um, I can imagine that there are some anxieties or just some questions around some of the announcements that have been made since about March, since we entered the pandemic. Um, so I'll get into those and I'll speak really generally about the entire system, but of course my expertise is for UC Berkeley. Um, I do wanna start off by saying and recognizing really that this is a challenging time um, and so I know well, I can offer, of course, a lot of expertise around the application process. I know that I can't necessarily speak to like to all the students' experiences of the college search process at this kind of a time. Um, and so I just want to acknowledge all of the things that are happening and hopefully can offer some responses to some of those um, questions that have been coming up. So to start us off, I, as I mentioned, like to talk about the entire UC system. Um, so you really can't go wrong with nine amazing campuses. Y'all probably already know that UC Berkeley is one of 10 campuses in the system, nine of which serve undergraduate students. And you'll notice we essentially span the length of the state. Um, there are two things that I'd like to highlight here. So one is that we do all share the UC application all entirely online. Um, and we conduct our individual um, review processes for each application we receive. Um, and so that's something I like to highlight. A lot of times students will ask me, is it okay that I apply to multiple campuses? Like, does that 
um, benefit me in the long run or does that hinder my um, my admission offered from another one so just to put it in a different way um, if somebody applies to say UC Berkeley and UC Riverside and UC Merced does one decision at one campus impact the decision at another by no means does that happen so sure we can talk to each other about the different applications we've received but we really don't have to. So I want to be really clear about that, that we actually really strongly encourage students to apply broadly within the system because you have a lot of really great options just within the University of California. So by all means, um, consider all of us as great options. Um, the second piece that I'll offer is, um, I actually just said both of them. I don't know why I lost my train of thought, but again, we use the UC application and by all means, um, encouraging all of you to apply broadly within the system itself. Alrighty, so just to go over the application timeline for the seniors in the room, I'm sh I imagine y'all are well aware of this. The application is open now. It opens every year, August 1st. Um, the submission period or application period is any time in November. Um, as long as you apply by the deadline, which is November 30th, 1159 p.m. Pacific time, um, we will consider your application. It makes no difference if a student submits earlier in November versus later in the month. We, do, we don't even offer um, early action or early decision. We also don't even read in order for the most part with our campuses. So again, as long as you submit your application by the deadline, we will of course do our full review of your application. Okay. Um, there is an application fee for every campus to which you wish to apply, and that's $70 for in-state residents, which is yourselves. Um, and so for every student, for, excuse me, for every campus that you're applying to, there is that $70 fee, though some students are eligible for fee waivers. Um, and the fee waiver application is right in the UC application towards the end, where you would be asked to report your annual family income and your household size. Um, and so it's calculated all within the application. couple of things. Okay, so as far as choosing a UC campus, the way that we like to frame this is what size campus appeals to you. So there are, there's a variety of the different environments you'll find within the UC system. Um, so for example, our smallest campus at the moment is UC Merced. It's also our youngest campus with just about 10,000 undergraduate students. Our largest campus kind of toggles between UC Davis, UCLA, UC San Diego, and Berkeley. Um, LA has just under 40,000 undergraduate students. So we have a large span and with the difference of our environments, right, on campus. Um, so that's something to consider as far as not only where we're located, but what kind of environment will you find. But as far as location, I probably don't need to talk too much about this since we're right across the bridge from you all, that UC Berkeley is probably your local UC, but what location would best serve your interests? If you're interested in living on the beach or if you're interested in living in a more rural area. Um, these are things to give consideration to with not just the UC systems, but of course any campus that you might be interested in pursuing higher ed at. And then finally, which campuses or campus offers the majors that you're interested in? Um, so just as an example for UC Berkeley, we have our Berkeley Academic Guide. We offer over 100 majors organized in six colleges and schools. Um, so every campus is different in terms of the academic programs that they offer. One question I get a lot about, uh, I get a lot is what about our nursing program? So UC Berkeley doesn't offer a nursing program, though UC Irvine and UCLA do. Um, so that's just one example of the ways we might differ in terms of our academic offerings. All right, and so just again to highlight the student body at the UC, we are a public institution in the state of California, and we do really pride ourselves on being a public good for the state. So we are comprised of 82% California residents, 40% of our students are first gen, so they are the first, sometimes the first in their family to go to college, or at least the first in their generation. And then we also pride ourselves on being an accessible campus through the transfer route. So if you are considering going to somewhere like Skyline or College of San Mateo um, and then transferring in after two or so years of completing your breadth or general education courses, 28% of our students are coming through the transfer route and specifically are coming from the California Community College um, route as well. So just wanted to also uplift that if that's something you're considering or later down the line consider as an option for you. Sorry, I went too quickly. <laughs> okay, so let me just check. All right, sorry about that, y'all. Um, so with freshman admissions, as far as some of the changes that we made um, due to the impacts of the pandemic on, the Mar on March 31st, the UC Regents did approve the temporary sus uh, suspension of the letter grade requirement for A through G courses. So if you, for whatever reason, are a student or you, you have a student in your family whose school um, required that they become 
um, pass no pass or pass credit grades, then that's something that is acceptable for our campus, uh, for, excuse me, for our system. Um, and so we don't require any additional explanation necessarily, but if you feel so inclined, you can utilize the additional comments section just to share with us more insight if again you feel that it's necessary but we do recognize the various ways that the pandemic has impacted schools and this is going to take effect for winter spring and summer 2020 courses all right just continuing on with the different policies um or continuing on with the past credit policy so again um, for courses to winter through summer 2020 to meet those a through g requirements we typically would require a letter grade but again recognizing the impact of the pandemic that's a suspension that we've lifted and was approved back in march um, though uc will continue to not accept letter grades of a d or f to meet a through g requirements Right, so the standardized test, I was eventually gonna get to it, now we're here. Um, and so as far as the SAT or ACT, the immediate change that has been made is that the UCs now no longer require it. So I'll say that again, just to be super, super clear, that the UC, the University of California UC system does not require the SAT or ACT um, as part of their eligibility requirements. Some campuses, you're more than welcome to submit them because some campuses may consider them in their application. Um, though others might not consider them at all. So for example, UC Berkeley um, will not be considering SATs or ACTs at any point in our review. So for our review of the application, for our scholarship review, for selection, anything of that sort, UC Berkeley is not going to need any SAT or ACT, though other campuses might. So again, if you're interested in pursuing or excuse me, submitting your SAT or ACT score, you're welcome to do so, um, though it is not a requirement. Sorry, okay, I was like, let me make sure that I'm on the right um, one. So again, entirely optional for students to submit scores. It doesn't, um, it won't impact your application. If you do submit it, if you don't, it's not that we're adding value. If you do add the SAT or if you do submit the SAT or ACT. So I wanna be clear that when we say it's optional, it is truly optional. Um, and then the other optional exams continue to be so. So if you're thinking about the SAT subject exams, AP exams, IB, what have you. Students are welcome to submit those. And again, we're never penalizing students for not submitting those scores. Because we're doing our comprehensive or holistic review, we're really looking at everything um, in the application. And exam scores, sure, they can add additional context about academic factors, um, but we can look at other factors as well that speak to those experiences that you have in the classroom or academic-wise. So I think that's it for me as far as the just general information about updates. Um, applying to the UC system. I see the chat's going up. Let me open up here. You actually have a question um, sure. from the Q&A. Um, which UCs are allowing submission of ACT and SAT scores? Sure. Um, thank you. So all of us, um, you're, not all of us, but all of the UC system, because they're test optional, you're welcome to submit your test scores if you'd like to. Um, none of us are requiring them. They're all optional. I'm not entirely sure which campuses are, are also um, taking this form of test blind where we're not considering them. Um, I believe Santa Cruz and Irvine are a couple of them, but I say that with the caveat that I recommend anyone who's interested in those schools contact the campuses directly. Um, but by and large, all of us are test optional, and then each specific campus is going to decide how to, um, what practices to pursue with the SAT and ACT. Any other questions about that? And I just realized I had these different resources that I'll provide to you all these links for online resources for UC Berkeley if you're interested. Um, but are there any other questions that I can hopefully answer for UC? All right, well, let me stop sharing and I appreciate your time and I'll be around if there are additional questions. Thank you all everyone. Thank you so much. Um, so next uh, we have the California State University of Sonoma. Oh, hi everybody. Let me go ahead and share my screen. Give me just one second.
So first of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Jose Padilla. I'm an enrollment advisor for California State University, Sonoma. Um, today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys just a little bit about the CSU system, who we are, what we offer. And at the same time, I'll be going over some of the changes that we have implemented because of COVID-19. So um, for those of you that don't know, the CSU system is the largest university system in the country with 23 campuses. So as you can see, our campuses range from Humble, which is up north, all the way to San Diego and everything in between. We have nearly almost 475 thousand students enrolled in our campuses with 49,000 faculty. Um, one of the things that, you know, that we're proud of within the CSU system is that we offer a high quality, accessible, affordable, and student-focused education. Our CSU systems, um, our campuses have distinct student population and program. So based on, you know, the, where the CSU system is located, each CSU you it's going to offer different majors it's going to offer a different lifestyle like if you enjoy the beach then of course you know a place like san diego would be a really great university for you if you enjoy the outdoors and the woods humble or sonoma state would be something for you as well so you know when you are thinking about um what university i want to go into what major i want to go into Start doing your research early on because then you're going to be able to see and discern what's the best university for you when you're thinking about the CSU system. We do offer a little more than 1,800 bachelor's degrees and master's degrees and 300 plus different subject areas for you to choose from. So just to give you an idea of our CSU campuses in the Bay Area ranging from small to um, a larger size. So Maritime and, Mo and Monterey are considered small. Those are usually campuses that have about less than 7,000 students in Rolla. And then mid-size, um, it would be Sonoma, or East Bay. Those are usually between eight to 12,000. And then we have our larger campuses, such as San Francisco and San Jose, which range between 30 to 40,000 students. So this is just kind of gives you, you know, an idea if you are planning to stay within um, the Bay Area, the options that you have as far as the CSU campuses. So what are the benefits and the contributions of the CSU system? We are the nation's largest four-year public institution. Um, we do, 95% of our students come from California, 88 come from all public schools as first-time freshmen, 92% of new transfers are from our California community colleges. And then of course, we are the state's greatest producer of our bachelor's degree. And then another reason about the CSU is that we drive the California economy, whether it be in agriculture, info technology, business, hospitality, life science, healthcare, public administration, education, media, entertainment, engineering, you, you name it, we have it and we offer it at the CSU system. The CSU it is the largest um, source of educators, more than half of the state's newly credential teachers actually come from our CSU. And then we have, you know, we're proud to have about 3 million aligned, meaning that one in 10 members of the California workforce is a CSU alum. And then of course, with the graduation initiative of 2025, we are planning to increase our graduation rates for all CSU students while eliminating the opportunity and achievement gap. So what can I study at a CSU? You know, like I said, we have a little, we have so many programs for you to choose from. One of the things about the CSU is our motto is learn by doing. We don't want you to just come in into our classroom and be sitting in a lecture hall. We want you to step outside of your classroom and start doing experiments, doing hand work, um, work on experience. That, that way, when you graduate, you're already going to have that work experience that these companies are looking for. These are just some of the few majors that we offer. Of course, you know, we have a wide range of majors that you can choose from depending on each of the CSUs that you're thinking of. So as far as the CSU admissions overview, so um, on a regular basis when we don't have COVID, these are the three main components that we're looking for when a freshman applies to Sonoma State University. One is that um, they're a high school graduate 
that they complete those 15 units of A through G courses with at least a C minus or higher and earn a, qual a qualifying eligibility index. Um, as far as the A through G courses, these are the minimum requirements that we look for when students apply to any university or any of the CSU universities. And these are just the minimum requirements that you see on here. So your students should already know what these A through G courses are because this is the courses that they're required to have if they want to go straight into a four-year university right after they graduate high school. And then, of course, this is what the eligibility index that we would use if it was, you know, on a normal cycle and we had the SATs and ACTs. And this is what we would use to calculate what that eligibility index would be. But given that we are living in an era of COVID, the CSU system has implemented two new admissions criteria as far as admitting students to our CSU campuses. One is grading. So now the CSU system will consider courses of grades of credit or pass as fulfilling A through G requirements for those courses completed during the winter, spring, or summer of 2020 term. All other coursework must be graded and a grade of C minus or better must be earned for the courses to satisfy A through G requirements. Grades of credit slash pass or no credit or no pass will not be included in the calculation of the GPA. And then as far as the SATs and ACTs, the CSU system will temporarily suspend the use of the SATs and ACT exam and determine admissions eligibility for all campuses for the 2021-2022 academic year. This temporary change of admissions eligibility applies for only the fall of 2021, winter 2022, and spring of 2022 um, admission cycle. So now what are the three things that we look for within your students applying to our 23 CSU campuses? One is that your student must be a high school graduate or equivalent. Two, that they complete that 15 unit comprehensive A through G pattern of college preparatory courses. And three, earn a qualifying A through G GPA. So these are the three main components that we're now gonna be looking at when your students are applying to our CSU campuses for the fall of 2021. And then of course, if your student decides to not go straight into our CSUs, but going to um, a community college first, these are the requirements that we're looking for for a transfer student coming over to our CSU. So the 60 semester, 90 quarter units, 30 units of general education, the four basic skill courses, and then with a grade of C or better, and then 2.0 GPA, and then be a good standing in the last institution. And then because of COVID-19, the only big change that we made is the campuses will accept credit or pass for courses completed in the winter, spring, or 2020, taken to satisfy the courses that you see in front of you. So our application starts today at midnight. So for all the students that want to apply to any CSU or to Sonoma State, our application opens October 1st, and we have extended the deadline from our regular November 30th to um, December 4th this year. Of course, it is going to be $70 for each application that the student does, so for each CSU that they're applying, and they would have to go to Cal State Apply to do so. So as far as impact and how this is going to play out, so if your student is planning to apply to an impacted campus or an impacted major, those impacted campus and impacted different GPA requirements that they're going to be looking at when your students are applying to them. So it's important that depending on the major or the campus that they're applying into, that they know whether or not the campus are impacted and they know what the different um, GPA requirements are. Just to give you an example, these are the non-impacted campuses. So these are campuses that will admit your students at the minimum requirements that we're looking for as far as the CSU system. And then these are all of your impacted campuses. So these are campuses that will admit your student at a higher GPA as well as many, if not all of their majors are fully impacted within um, the institution. So the average cost of attendance, so this is kind of gives you a glance of the average cost of attendance for a CSU system, depending on the location 
and how you know how big that um, the institution is. So you know we have from Fresno to San Francisco, Sonoma, San Luis Obispo. So depending on housing, depending on tuition costs, they all have a you know just a little bit difference between one another. And then tips and resources, of course, explore the campuses via their websites and take virtual tours, especially right now. And then, um, you know, apply early. This is something I always tell students, apply early, early. Even though I say this so many times, 75% of our applicants, um, we get about a million applications each year for all 23 campuses. 75% of those 1 million applicants, we get them until the last week of November. So it's important that they apply early because that way they're going to start hearing early from us. And remember that you are admitted is conditional. So you must do well your entire senior year to meet the admissions requirement. And then some of the resources go to Cal State Apply, um, go to the CSU system and learn about all of the CSUs as well as their majors and all of the requirements through there. And then any questions or concerns, this is my email address as well as our outreach email address. So if you have any questions about Sonoma State or any other CSU, feel free to reach out to me as well. Thank you so much. That was a lot of great information there. So for our last presenter, uh, we have Loyola Marymount University. Hi, everyone. My name is Evelyn Fajardo, and I'm an admission counselor at Loyola Marymount University. Um, it's located in Los Angeles, California. Um, on the west side of Los Angeles, since it is pretty big, and we can look at a little bit of a map later. So I have a few things to show you all today. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Um, LMU is a private university um, and the private schools, uh, some private universities may just have their own application that you have to go to their website in order to fill it out. Uh, whereas others are part of the common application or the coalition application, which are two different kinds of applications uh, where you're able to submit uh, the same kind of basic information to a variety of different colleges. And so I know I'm sure in your counseling sessions, you will be going over it um, for the most part, but I do just want to share my screen so you can take a look at what you would see um, uh, if you were to submit it. This is what we see on our end. This is a uh, Ignatius lion. For those of you who don't know, uh, our mascot is the lions or Iggy lion. Um, so this is an, a common application that we would see. We see personal information. We see family information. One of the things to know about LMU and that a lot of other private universities and colleges is that we do take a holistic approach to this application process. So yes, we're looking at your GPA and we're looking at your transcript and, and um, you know, in the past we've considered test scores. We're, you know, we're test optional this year, which we'll talk about a little bit more in a second. Um, but we also take a look at what else you've been involved with, what activities you've been involved with, what sort of leadership opportunities you've been involved with, um, what, you know, sort of maybe service opportunities you've been involved with, um, or if you haven't had the time to be involved with those things because maybe you take on a lot of responsibility at home, that's something else that you would report to us. Um, and we would take these kinds of things into consideration. Um, I'm, again, I'm not going to spend too much time walking through this. I do want to talk about a few LMU specific things though, and this would apply to, uh, to basically any uh, university that you're applying to with the common application or coalition application, is that usually, not always, but usually they have some sort of uh, college specific questions that they want you to answer in addition to the general application that you send. So in addition to all the general information that we just covered that would be sent to all of the different universities that you're applying to, uh, there's also a section for you to fill out a college specific information, which we see here. Uh, one of the things that they might ask you are questions like, why are you interested in attending this university? Uh, why are you interested in the major that you've selected? And so you have the option uh, to talk about that. That's a pretty common question. For LMU, it is a, it, it's 
a uh, optional statement of intent, but I always recommend that if students are really interested in LMU that they go ahead and you take that seriously and really uh, thoughtfully let us know why you're interested in that university or your major um, or both. Uh, again, like I mentioned, uh, a lot of private universities, we take a holistic approach. So yes, we're going to be looking at the transcript, uh, but more than just what this number is, that's not the end all be all. Um, we take a look at, we take a deep dive into the transcript so that it tells us a story. Um, and at LMU, different universities are gonna do it differently. For us, we do look at your grade starting your ninth grade year. So starting your freshman year, up until the time that you apply. Uh, so for LMU, we offer an early action and an early decision deadline by November 1st. And uh, so for students that apply by November 1st, we'd be seeing your grades starting from your freshman year all the way to the end of your junior year. Um, and then if you apply regular decision, which for us is January 15th, which gives you, you know, a lot more time, uh, then you are able to show us maybe the first semester of your senior year as well, and we're able to take that into consideration. Um, so again, a, a lot of us are going to be taking these deeper dives. We see over here that for Iggy Lion, uh, you know, maybe they had a rougher time their sophomore year. And so our job as holistic admission counselors is to sort of try to piece together why that is. Um, and so if we read, if we read through this application, you would see, you know, his parents were going through a really messy divorce at that time. Um, and so he had to take on a lot more home responsibilities. And so the grades dipped. So letting us know this kind of information on your application, I think really helps to tell the story as to why we may uh, be seeing different dips. Maybe you started off, uh, you know, maybe the, the start of your freshman year was a little difficult for you, but you've been rocking it ever since. We see this giant upward trend. These are the kinds of stories that we're trying to tell. Um, I also want to mention that a lot of universities are going to have their own supplemental writing uh, sections as well. Uh, so in addition to that personal statement that you would be submitting via the common application or the coalition application, um, LMU, like many private universities, have our own writing supplement. Uh, so we have uh, different universities approach it differently. Some may be more short answer. Uh, so they have a few different prompts and you answer it in a few sentences. Whereas for LMU, we actually ask for an entire essay, basically. So we uh, give students the option to choose of one of three different different uh, supplemental question prompts, and then students go ahead and write out a, a response to that prompt um, in addition to whatever else that they are, um, what, whatever else they're submitting with their common application. Um, I do just also want to mention um, that we have a variety of different opportunities for you all to uh, really engage with us and get some additional support with this. Uh, so I just want to show you some of these opportunities that we have available. Uh, so here we have our virtual visit page. We are closed uh, in terms of our campus. Distance learning is still going strong, uh, but our campus is closed to visitors, but we definitely want to make sure that students have the opportunity to engage with us. Um, so if you're interested in coming in as a first year student, we have an entire page dedicated to different virtual visit opportunities. And so the, that common application readout that you just saw me sharing is actually from our first year application workshop uh, where we share much more in depth all the tips and tricks that we have as admission counselors, how we use the information that you provide to us on your application when we're reviewing and all of the different things that go into that um, evaluation process. Um, so definitely a uh, shout out to those two opportunities. Uh, we also have general information sessions. We also have sessions for our different colleges and universities. Um, I can go ahead and share a little bit more about LMU specifically, if that's all right with you all. Um, just briefly, let's see, let me switch the screen sharing. Um, so LMU is a Jesuit university, which means we are a Catholic university, but we are open um, and welcoming to people, 
people and students of all backgrounds and all faiths. We take pride in the fact that we have such a uh, heavy religious diversity on campus because we do believe that the conversations that students have with each other uh, really enrich their educational opportunities. So as a Jesuit uh, university, we have three parts to our mission. The first is the encouragement of learning. So of course that's happening inside the classroom with the discussions that you're having with your peers as well as with our world-class faculty. But it also means project-based learning outside of the classroom. So students get heavily involved in undergraduate research with professors or, um, or building, it, uh, building their own research opportunities. We have uh, interdisciplinary project-based opportunities as well, such as our CubeSat project, uh, which the goal of that is to launch our own LMU nano satellite into space by 2022, which is exciting. Uh, the second part of our mission is the education of the whole person. So in addition to that intellectual development, uh, we, un we acknowledge that the mind and the intellect is what, but one facet of the entire human experience. And so we want to make sure that we're providing an education that integrates mind, body, spirit, um, and so you're not just developing academically, but you're also developing in your interpersonal skills and your professional abilities, and you're really realizing your leadership potential. Um, and then finally, the last part of our mission is the service of faith and promotion of justice, like I mentioned. We are open to students from all faith backgrounds. The big thing at LMU is that no matter what you believe in, we're going to encourage students uh, to think of the ways that their skill sets, their passions, and the things that they're learning at LMU can be implemented uh, to promote justice in their communities, to make their communities a better place, to create the world that they want to live in. We really want to empower students to uh, use the tools that they're learning from LMU and um, implement them to make other people's lives better. Um, in terms of the academic experience, we're a medium-sized university, uh, so we offer a lot of the opportunities you might find on a larger campus, including NCAA Division I sports. Uh, we have sorority and fraternity life on campus. We have over 150 different majors, minors, pre-professional programs, credential programs that you're able to choose from. Uh, but the great thing is that even though we're big enough to offer all those things, we're still small enough to have an intimate class size, average class size at LMU is 19 students. It'll never be in a huge lecture hall. It'll always be this more intimate classroom size where you know your peers and you know your professors uh, and you have a student to faculty ratio of 10 to one. So again, a lot of that nurturing environment. We have five different undergraduate schools and colleges. So it rep represents the fine five areas of discipline you can go into. It includes the liberal arts, business, communication and fine arts, film and television, and science and engineering. Tons of really awesome hands-on opportunities in all of those. Um, and part of that is because of our prime location. Like I mentioned before, we're in Los Angeles, specifically on the west side. I am a native Bay Arean myself. I uh, grew up in Emeryville, just across the Bay from you all. Um, and so I found that LMU was the perfect distance from home. It gave me that sense of going away for college, gave me that sense of independence, but it was still close enough that if I wanted to pop up for a weekend for my mom's birthday or um, if something happened and I needed to go home, it was a really great distance from the Bay Area. It's also uh, really uh, excellently located in LA because you have access to everything that Los Angeles has to offer, both uh, for fun as well as professional opportunities, but we're still on the west side of LA. Uh, so it's a lot more of a beachy laid back environment. It's a beautiful, beautiful campus. We're one of the few places in LA where you're able to see both the Pacific Ocean and the Hollywood sign at the same time, which is really exciting. Um, and there are also tons of opportunities down here in Silicon Beach. Uh, I know you all have grown up with Silicon Valley in your backyard. Silicon on beach is much of the same kind of vibe. Uh, it is technology media and startup companies uh, in that area right at the base of the LMU campus. So there are tons and tons of internship opportunities, not just there, but all across um, the LMU or, or all across the Los Angeles area. Uh, so finally, uh, I just want to share some application timeline dates. Uh, you can feel free to screenshot this, but all of this is available online. Again, we accept the common application, the coalition application, and an LMU online application. Uh, our deadlines are November 1st for early action or early decision, and our regular decision deadline is January 15th. Thank you all so much. Great. Um, thank you so much to our presenters and thank you so much for um, families and 
and students for uh, submitting some great questions in the Q&A and I appreciate all of our presenters answering them. Um, so I know that a couple of our presenters also have um, actually other <laughs> presentations to do tonight. Um, you're more than welcome to, to stay, uh, but the, right now both um, Lori Tizak and I will be going into more of the um, school specific um, action items for students to do and um, for to get ready to, for to submit applications to your institutions. Mm -hmm. um, is, before I let you go, do you guys have any, um, any one of you have any uh, last um, words or, or any advice for our students? Um, I would, yeah, sure. Um, my advice that I always give to students is to make sure that you know what the university or the college that you're applying to really stands for and to really help us visualize you on that campus. So for example, for LMU, I just shared the mission. Um, how might that reflect in your life now? How might you want it to reflect in the future? And really helping admission counselors sort of see uh, how your life experiences sort of match up with what that institution is trying to promote, um, I think is a really awesome approach to your application. Thank you, Evelyn. Segue to unless uh, um, our other two presenters would like to chime in because that's what um, both Mrs. Tzak and I will be going into today is talking about their personal statements um, as well as answering the UC's personal intent questions. Great. Thank you so much um, to um, the three of you. And then now I'm going to move forward and share my screen. Hi. Okay. So now we're going to get into some of the more um, things to do. And um, I know there's a lot of information that was shared uh, tonight, but, you know, we're all here for you. Um, you actually have quite a few of individuals who are here. We might be distanced, but um, we're very still, uh, we, you could still reach out to us for support. So again, um, I am Josephine Ho, the 12th grade counselor. And then um, tonight we are joined also with Mrs. Tzak, where I know many of you have been working with her, maybe starting even your junior year. Some of your families have been reaching out to her since soft, uh, sophomore year. So she is our college and career advisor. Um, we also have a 12th grade advisor, uh, Mrs. Angela Castillo, um, and someone who you should also get to know is our financial aid and scholarship advisor, Carolyn Mawala. Uh, she's not able to join us tonight, um, but you could definitely also email her, reach out to her. Um, another person, if you wanna talk more about career specific um, uh, jobs or um, maybe something in the trades, or maybe if you're interested in community college and vocational studies, you could also reach out to um, Mrs. Helen O'Brien. Um, but tonight we're going to focus on the four-year colleges. So with that, um, here is our agenda that we're going to just kind of go through. Uh, the comparison of college application requirements, uh, just touch on the ACT, SAT, uh, additional requirements for uh, private colleges, financial aid, and um, our upcoming events. So college application uh, requirements. Here is a, just a really simple graph, and I would suggest maybe even doing a, a print screen on it, um, just so you could have it handy, because I will say, every year I have students asking, do the CSUs want a personal statement? Um, do they accept letters of rec? I know the UCs want letters of rec, and that's actually all false. So if you could see on this chart that only the private colleges require letters of rec. So if you are a student who are applying to the UCs or CSUs only and not looking into the private colleges, then you do not need a letter of recommendation. Um, there is a little caveat. Um, sometimes a couple UCs uh, campuses have reached out to uh, students in the past. It's actually about only 
one or two percent of their applicant pool and they have asked for additional information uh, for their letters of rec so and and they ask for letters of rec so please do not send it in to them unless you were specifically asked and you would be asked through your portal which we will go about that in a little bit so there's the new CSU application deadline that you heard tonight. Uh, it is December 4th. For the past many, many years, it's always been the same as the UC. Uh, they, however, they decided to change it for this year. So it's uh, December 4th. And then the UC application deadline will continue to be November 30th. And as you can see, private colleges, they do vary. Um, so I would really suggest you to ch uh, double check with the private colleges. And in community colleges, they do not start their application until in, the Febu in February. And we will hold another uh, workshop and to talk specifically about community colleges. CSUs. So again, they are now requesting a minimum GPA of a 2.5. SATs, ACTs are not required. The application window, October 1st through December 4th, and you can submit the application anytime during that time. Uh, however, um, if you do submit it earlier, you might hear back from the school earlier um, in terms of uh, your acceptance. So, and the CSU application is pretty straightforward. Uh, is you don't need uh, a um, letters of rec, nor do you need personal statements. So it's definitely a application that you could get through um, in a few in a few hours. I would say maybe about an hour and a half or so. What do you think, Mrs. Tzak? Yeah, it's a real. It's very basic, so you would be able to get through it. Okay. UC's 3.0 GPA. Um, that's the remains the same. Again, SAT, ACT are not required. Um, several campuses are test blind, as UC Berkeley has mentioned. Um, and what we have learned right now that uh, the UC Irvine, as well as, oh, it was Irvine and, oh, I'm trying to remember the last campus, they have said uh, they are test blind. Test optional, what that means is that they would be using your score for placement only. So it would not be used in your admissions to gain admissions. There are four personal insight questions. Um, and you have to answer four out of the eight in 350 words or less. We will go over that in a little bit. And you can submit through November 1st through the 30th. Private colleges, uh, they have their own application requirements and due dates. So please, uh, I would suggest looking at um, their uh, using Common App to see when their applications are due, or you could also look at each individual school on their website. Um, for this year, we will say that majority of the private schools have agreed to make SATs, ACT um, tests, uh, or excuse me, um, make the tests optional. Mm -hmm. uh, what remains the same is the personal statement and also supplemental essays, as well as the letters of rec. And official transcripts are required for mid-year, so they do request a mid-year transcript, which means that uh, the Aragon will be needing to submit uh, a transcript at the at the end of the fall semester. So in January, we will be some uh, we will be sending off your transcript, and then the final transcript will not be sent until June upon admission and also upon your intent to attend the school. Um, and uh, most colleges are through the Common App. One thing that many of our families are not aware of is what's called the WUI, Western Undergraduate Exchange. So you could actually, if you're interested in going to an out-of-state public school, such as in Washington or Nevada, Arizona, on the West Coast, you can pay um, a significantly reduced tuition, okay, through the Western Undergraduate Exchange. As you could see, Western, uh, Washington State University without the WUI for out-of-state tuition is at $25,000. But if you go through with the WUI, it's only $15,000. And the college will be able to help you to decide whether or not you qualify for the WUI. 
And here it is just by the numbers. There was actually um, over 17,000 Californians that head on out and try to uh, go to a college that is outside of their state. And I would su highly suggest you checking out this list of all the participating schools. Uh, there is, I only listed Washington State, but there's also Arizona State, U University of Arizona is also on the list. So please um, go and check that out. SAT and ACT. Um, so if you, if you already took it and you would like to share your score with the college, you, you certainly can. Uh, so for the CSUs, if you would like to send their score, go ahead and use the code 3594 with the SAT and you just need to send it to one campus and then that's it and then any other CSUs that you apply to will be able to access the score. Same with the UCs, you just send it to one campus. Uh, unfortunately for private schools because they are all their individual campuses, you would need to send it to each individual school. Subject test remains optional, including for the UCs and private schools. Private college applications. Here's just a quick um, checklist of everything that you need for the private college applications. Very similar to the UCs, uh, minus the ACE the test scores, but you do need a personal statement um, and then, of course, no letters of rec for the UCs, but otherwise everything is kind of similar. Um, the early action, it means non-binding, which means that you will not, if you apply through the early action and you get accepted and you choose not to go, that's okay. You, you can say no. However, if you apply early decision, you will have to actually sign a contract that indicates that you acknowledge that if you are accepted, you need to go. You also need your family to sign a statement that indicates that if you are accepted, you will need to go. And then lastly, I also need to sign a statement that says that I spoke with you and you understand that you have committed yourself to attending their school if admitted. There are over 700 private colleges on the common application. Fortunately, if you want to apply to many of them, you only need one. Um, and so all you have to do is just apply to um, through the Common App. And the only difference is some of the uh, many colleges might have supplements. So supplemental essays that you might need to do. Now, during, um, in the section of the letters of recommendation, we do recommend students to waive their right to view their letters of recommendation. If you do not waive your right, colleges will question on why you would like to see your letters of recommendation. Um, so, and uh, in some instances, uh, we would not be able to uh, submit letters of recommendation um, unless you do waive your right um, at some institutions. Uh, and then um, you could seek your Naviance account to the Common App. And this, once you do the sync, uh, then it would be actually, it would allow Aragon to submit your transcripts um, through that synchronization, right? Mm -hmm. um, another thing about the common application is that many times uh, colleges also might send you a code that says, hey, apply to our school for free, here's a code. However, if, even if you get that code, you could still apply for free through the common application. And we would suggest you to do so um, because if you apply through another way, that's just a whole other set of applications and forms that you have to fill out. That is not necessary because you've already done it, um, already completed it through the common app. So please just uh, use the common application. Uh, it's just saving yourself a lot of time and extra work. Um, and then um, 
The only exceptions on not being able to apply on common applications would be some schools that are specifically coalition only or Georgetown. Georgetown is very special. They have their own uh, unique application. And I do work with students who apply to Georgetown. Um, Mrs. Tzak also helps students walk through their application as well. Um, and I did mention the coalition application. It is a, uh, it's more so for if you're interested in University of Washington, some colleges in Texas and Florida uses the coalition application instead of the common app. And if that's the case, that's okay. You can still um, indicate that through Naviance and we will still be able to submit all of your transcripts and letters of rec through Naviance. The personal statement. Um, so just remember that the personal statement is your interview. Um, this is your time to tell them more about yourself than what they can tell from your transcript. It's more about you, who you are. Okay? Um, and a lot of students try to um, ask, they always ask me, they're Ms. Ho, I don't know what to write about. There's so much to write about because there's so much more to you than just the transcript. Mm -hmm. You know, what makes you you? Is it your family? Is it what you do on the weekends with your family? What you do after school? Have you, do you have a passion? Did you, have you been doing gymnastics ever since you were three and how has that impacted your life? Um, but remember, it's all about you. So um, if you want to write about how your family has impacted you, in that essay needs to be more about you and not about your family, right? So not talking about others, you need to go in depth. Um, and another common mistake is using the thesaurus. Oh, excuse me. Uh, another question that has come up and um, I actually took this off from the UC, um, uh, UC conference, counselor conference that I attended and there's a lot that has happened in the past year or even more, um, especially in terms of when you think about COVID and social justice. And all of our lives has been uprooted um, and some has hindered or impacted their life more than others. It's not necessary to talk about COVID or social justice, um, However, if you feel that it has significantly impacted your academics or your personal life, then let's talk about it. Let's write about it. And here are some examples of what you can write about that the UC shared with, with counselors. Um, I'm not gonna go through all of the list here. Um, however, again, I think students need to think about how it has significantly impacted their life. Um, everyone were, has not been able to go to school. We all have had to go on distance learning. However, um, have you got, maybe you lack that support to be successful through student uh, uh, distance learning. Is it a learning difference that you have to overcome um, while even when you were in school, but now even it has in fact impacted you, you know, tenfold now that you are on distance learning. Um, or maybe it has something to do with social justice that you felt that, you, you know, with maybe perhaps you've had racism um, or um, certain things has had happened personally in your life and maybe perhaps you haven't been able to express some of the sadness or anger or frustration until now that you feel like you are in this time of moment that you can be open with your feelings or maybe not. So those are just things that you can, you can share. Right. One of the colleges that I was talking to today was um, saying, is there even if like did your values change during this time when you were home did did things change did you start uh did you start playing chess with someone in your family that you had never done before so even the most mundane things uh, miss ho kind of said that that the most mundane things you do sometimes are so interesting to someone else mm -hmm. so you need to really think about that that there there are some amazing things that students do that they realize aren't, they think aren't amazing. And then when they set, when they tell people, it's, it, it's, it's really cool. So definitely think about those kinds of things. Thank you. Yeah, no, great. <laughs> 
So letters of recommendations, um, again, is only for private schools. Uh, so we like to go a little old school here. <laughs> um, so if we were in, in person, we would tell you, hey, go up to the teacher and ask in person. Um, but that's not, po that's not possible. So maybe perhaps you have the teacher for as you have the teacher now as a classroom teacher in one of your classes, so go to their <coughs> time or office hours. Or if not, and you want to reach out to them, please ask them uh, through email. Mm -hmm. um, and also uh, use Naviance to submit requests to each teacher. Okay. Once so they've said they'll do it, <laughs> <laughs> so they, they come back and say they'll write the letter for you, and then you'll submit their name into Naviance, so they're not surprised, but yeah. Perfect. And then the counselor letters of rec. So the counseling office and administration actually takes on um, letter writing. Um, there's a, many students that request. So the, off, the office comes together and pitches in. So we would like you to check in with Mrs. Tzak first and then again follow up with an email to the counselor. Um, here I mentioned assistant principal, but actually it's really administration as um, our principal or new principals taking on that task of also helping students to write letters of rec. And um, so you would need to also follow up with completing the questionnaire. And then after that, uh, the counselor or administrator will follow up with the student to uh, make an appointment so they can chat and get to know each other a little bit. And if you haven't done so already, please ask now, especially for those who are planning to apply early decision or early action. Um, and also the please ask by November 1st if you're not applying early. Right. So if you just email me and say that you would like to uh, have someone write your letter of rec, a counselor, just email me and we will set up an appointment and we go, th I will take you through the whole process of um, the counselor letter of rec and we will set you up with some to write your letter. Uh, so here is just a quick um, a snapshot of how it looks like in Naviance. Uh, so you would uh, just select the colleges that you would like the teacher or counselor to write for you. And then uh, here is the next, uh, another screenshot of how it looks like as once you click on to request and it will show when, um, who you put down as the recommender and when the applicate or excuse me, when the uh, recommendation is due. Mm -hmm. I do wanna just quickly say that the deadline, the letter of rec deadline is the same <coughs> as the application deadline. However, your application needs to be in by the deadline. If your, if your letter of recommendation is not in by the deadline, whether it's the teacher, admin, or counselor, or maybe you're even someone who is a, a coach or um, an outside teacher as your third letter of rec, um, it's okay. Uh, we are not bound by the same deadline as your application deadline. If your application, de if your application is not in by the deadline, then unfortunately it will not be read. Um, and, but however, if our recommendation letter goes in after the deadline is okay, it will still be processed. And oftentimes the colleges would actually reach out to the school and say, hey, we're missing your letter of rec. Maybe it got missed in the transmission. So no worries about it. So just send it over to us. Mm -hmm. um, and if you decide not to apply to a private school, uh, please let us know. Uh, so, uh, because we do take a lot of time and in invest into putting a letter for you. Uh, and so we would just greatly appreciate if you just let us know if you don't need the letter anymore. Uh, make sure you keep your Naviance up to date. Yeah. And I just wanted you to know that the letters that the counselors, administrators, the teachers, these are letters they write personally. They don't use templates. So that's why we say if you decide that, oh, I really don't need a letter, let that teacher know because they're writing dozens of letters 
So it just takes a little pressure off of them, but they do write them personally. Mm -hmm. um, Mrs. Cizak, do you wanna go over Let's transcripts? Talk about transcripts. So the way you're gonna request a transcript, um, because we're in uh, the COVID, um, you're gonna be listing all of your colleges, um, two year uh, Common App Coalition, UC, CSU, every single school, even Georgetown, although they always say they're, they don't go with the group because that what makes, that's what makes them different. You're going to list them all in your Naviance colleges I'm applying to. And if you go into your colleges I'm applying to and you see your schools there and you're tran you haven't ordered transcripts, you're just gonna go to manage transcripts and you're gonna go down and click the boxes to order the transcripts, okay? So, um, and then make sure that you'll be applying to the college before making the request. So don't make this list and go in and, and, and order all these transcripts and then say, well, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not going to that school. So we wanna make sure that your colleges I'm applying to list is pretty um, steady. Um, transcripts are sent electronically. And once we've sent a, a document a transcript or a report, a letter of rec or um, some common app form, we cannot pull that back. So once it's gone, uh, the transaction cannot be undone. And only the private schools require the mid-year transcript, which Ms. Um, Ho told you was the um, first set of senior year grades. So it's your freshman year to um, your fall semester of your senior year. And those are senior grades. Uh, semester grades, no six-week grades. I've had a couple students ask about, well, do you send out our six-week? No, not unless you were to come to us because a school required the six-week, but not. there are very, very, very few schools that require six-week grades. Um, the college you choose to attend and you say, that's where I'm going and that will be at the end of the year in May, that is where you will send your official final transcript or your graduation transcript. And those go out in June in plenty of time before the deadlines that um, the colleges have. So you will be um, ordering that final transcript in May, but that's when you've decided where you're going. And that's very exciting. Now remember the CSUs and the UCs um, don't require transcripts unless they've requested them. So you need to be checking or the student needs to be checking their email or their portals regularly, actually once they've submitted that application because the school's gonna contact them. And that is really the only way the school colleges will contact you now is through email. So make sure you are checking your emails when they tell you to set up your portal, set up your portal. Transcripts are free. So there will be no charge for transcripts, okay? Um, if you took any community college classes online that are you know, outside of um, Aragon, you've got to request that transcript through, um, whether it's CSM, Kenyatta, Skyline, Foothill, you would go into your web smart for um, CSM, Kenyatta, or Skyline, and you would be requesting those college transcripts to be sent to the uh, four-year common schools that you're applying to. And Aragon, uh, Aragon cannot send grades earned from another institution, which means your Chem 192 might be on our transcript. And our grades are official to us, but although we have CSM's Chem 192 on our transcript, the college still wants to see that transcript from um, uh, the community college. So make sure that it, you're sending your uh, community college transcripts to the colleges you're applying to. Um, and then uh, do seniors, do senior grades and academic rigor count for the CSUs you see in private schools? What do you think? Absolutely. They are gonna be looking at those senior year grades because lots of students think, oh, senior year doesn't matter. Yes, it does. So after applying, you must notify schools of you know, any changes in your schedule. Like um, if you decide to, after you've probably had a discussion with Ms. Ho and your parent, 
uh, and you decide to drop a class uh, spring semester, but you've already reported to the college that you were going to be taking that in the spring semester, um, or if you get any Ds or Fs during semester year, you have got to notify the colleges that you are applying to. Colleges do not like surprises when they receive your final grades. So letting them know in advance will really um, ease your anxiety and theirs. For sure. And yes, Ms. Tizak, you're right. It's the semester grades. So let's say you might have gotten a D this past six week grading period. That's okay. You still have time to bring that grade up. Yes. Yes. So thank you. I want to say, you know, right now it's 713. I really appreciate all the family and students who is hanging in there with us. So we are going to go through these slides um, as um, quickly as, I, as we can. But at the same time, we acknowledge that it, this is really important information that we would like to share as well. And we have one question. Aren't the transcripts bundled with the counselor letter of rec? Yes, they are in Naviance. When your counselor writes their letter, your transcript will go with that electronic packet. But we would still like you to go in and click the order transcript because um, that is a way that we're doing a count on how many transcripts and um, trying to keep transcripts organized on who we send out to. So if a student could go in and please just click that box, order transcript, just so we can keep um, our, um, our numbers so we can see the numbers of how many transcripts we are um, sending out, okay? Um, so financial aid, this is money to pay for college. Um, as you can see, um, Ms. Moala put this really good slide together and grants is our gift aids. Um, and then um, you have the Pell Grant, the Cal Grant. The Cal Grant is, um, your student's Cal Grant has already been submitted by state law. Um, our school uh, it actually is going to be submitted. By state law, we have to submit uh, our seniors um, Cal Grant grades um, to the state of California. So that will be done for the student. Um, then there's the Chaffee Grant and institutional grants. And these are all uh, really good gift aid money that your student could possibly um, receive. Work study is earned uh, money by um, a student working and work study would be assigned to a student through the college that they are attending. Then you have loans, which is money that you borrow and you have to pay back with interest. And there are several types of loans that uh, Ms. Mawala, when she has financial aid workshops, she'll be going through all of this. And then there's scholarships. That's that free money that you get to win. And um, it's usually based on your merit, but it can be based on, um, you know, an interest or a hobby or uh, volunteer work you do. Um, there's all types of scholarships out there. And there are some that are for students who are, you could have financial need. So definitely please check out the scholarships. These are all really uh, great ways to make your way through college. Okay, financial aid applications. So in order to receive uh, or see if you're eligible for a number of the um, items that we listed on the um, screen before, you would be applying through the FAFSA, which is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, or the DREAM Act. And the DREAM Act is for um, students who, um, that do not have a, uh, are without a social security number or an alien registration number. No, sorry. Uh, yeah, the DREAM Act is for students without the social security number. So um, what we need to be careful of is the FAFSA and the DREAM Act look exactly alike. So if you have a social security number or the alien registration number, you're going to be using the FAFSA. And remember, this is an absolutely free form from the federal government. So if you go online and you get to a website that says, oh, we'll charge you $50, you are on the wrong site. You um, would be going to the government's free site, okay? And Ms. Moala has the website up there. It is opening tomorrow on October 1st. And for California deadline, it is March 2nd. 
of 2021. And that means you would be uh, eligible not only for being uh, for federal money um, by using the FAFSA, but also Cal Grant money. So you definitely can, um, there's a good possibility you'd be getting some good money. The EFC is the estimated family contribution. And that this is decided when you are filling out the FAFSA. Um, and it, it is uh, determined by the income, the family income, the family assets, the number of family in the household, and the number of family members in college, excluding parents. Back in the day, they used to, um, they used to bring the parents into the total. So parents would go to college. So, but uh, several years back, the uh, government took that away. So it's the number of your students in college. Definitely check out the scholarship list that um, our district has. It's on the front page of Naviance and it's in our Aragon website. This is a district wide scholarship list and there are you know, hundreds of scholarships in there and it's updated constantly. So definitely go in and look and uh, contact Ms. Mawala because she is a wealth of information as far as uh, financial aid goes for schools and scholarships. We also have a really supportive community who give back to Aragon students yes. specifically. So in that list, there's a tab on that spreadsheet that says Aragon. And please click on that because that's only for Aragon students that yeah. students can apply to for scholarships. Our Rotary Club is an amazing organization who has been such a wonderful supporter to our students. And uh, so then that, so that would be one of the many organizations uh, that students can apply to. Oh, Mrs. Tezak, you're on mute. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so uh, we always say, check your emails. Uh, to avoid delays and you apply for that FAFSA or DREAM Act as early as October 1st. Um, some schools will not consider you for a merit scholarship unless you apply through for the, um, with the FAFSA. And that is because they just, they want you to have it in their system in case, uh, it's like a safety net. It's like a safety net. Um, financial aid application deadlines for private schools are often much earlier than um, the uh, federal government deadline or the state deadline. So make sure that you check your private schools, their own financial aid deadline. Mm -hmm. And you check those um, colleges financial aid websites for deadlines. That's um, a really good place to look. And many private colleges do require the, it's called the CSS profile. It's a financial aid application and it is, um, a uh, college board uh, mm -hmm. uh, based. It is one of the only applications for financial aid that you would be paying money to use to apply. But CSS profile is for private colleges and it's the way they give out their own private money. Mm -hmm. So um, definitely if you are looking at private schools, go into the CSS profile and see if any of your private schools are listed there. No UC takes it, no CSU. Um, it will only be the schools listed on there. And you may find some of your private schools don't ask for it. But um, definitely check it out and look at those deadlines because um, like I said, they're sooner than the um, March 2nd. And some of them are for, uh, start in November. So really uh, take a look at that. There's the College Promise, um, the California Promise. Uh, college grant, and that's a BOG waiver. Um, please book an appointment with Ms. Mawala. Um, she's there for you. And um, as she says in her slide here, she's here flex lunch and she has open periods. So uh, please check with her. Um, we have the college fair coming up here. So that's gonna be virtual Tuesday, October 15th, 5.30 to 8.30. Um, I have seen the, um, the uh, flyer that they're gonna put out to parents very soon. It's amazing how many schools have signed up and how many breakout rooms we are going to have. Um, so hopefully by tomorrow, I'm told, that the um, completed um, program will be out. And um, there will be a, a financial aid um, presentation. Um, there's gonna be um, 
I don't know, I'm going to say hundreds of breakout rooms so <laughs> that you will be able to go and go visit with colleges. So um, definitely plan on saving the date for Tuesday, October 15th. It's going to be um, pretty amazing. Ms. Tezak, sorry to interrupt you. Um, is it on Tuesday, October 13th or is it on Ooh. Thursday, oh. October 15th? Sorry, this is the, this is what they sent. This is, so perhaps the, um, who. The so we will figure that out, everybody, and we it will. Is, it is October 15th. Now they must have put the wrong Perfect. Date. So it's a Thursday, everybody. Just okay, they, I need to go back to the, <laughs> to the people who put it together and tell them they have the wrong day. It is October 15th. Thank you, Ms. McGendron. Sorry about that. <laughs> We'll put out a new flyer. Yes. Oh, they'll definitely, they'll put it out. Okay. We are having a, a community college night for our students and parents, our senior students, and that um, will be coming Tuesday, October 10th. And um, as of right now, it's CSM Kenyatta Skyline, and we will have Ms. O'Brien, our CTE coordinator, and um, she will be um, talking to students about and parents about uh, the skilled trades. Um, so definitely, if community college is going to be in your path, please come that night, Tuesday, uh, November 10th, and um, uh, Zoom with us. And we got a lot, we have a lot of workshops for you guys. We also have the financial aid workshop. Um, that's going to be Thursday, November 19th, and you will Zoom with that one, and Ms. Mawala will be there for you. And it's going to be very hands-on. Yeah. It will be over Zoom as well with uh, breakout rooms for each family. Um, and so you can work one-on-one -on -one with a financial aid officer uh, from, the, uh, from advisors at CSM as well as with uh, Ms. Mawala. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry about that. So actually, let me just go back there. Um, I did, what I wanted to actually bring up is about college visits. So if you can actually check our website, there is, we have college visits happening daily and it is updated on our website under college information. And right at the top, it says fall 2020 college visits. And you will be able to see a whole list of all the colleges and also the links to their Zoom and the time and day that they will be presenting to our students. Uh, so there's presentations that happen throughout the week and it only happens during non-school hours. So it might happen in the morning at eight o'clock before school starts. It can also happen after school, um, after 3 p.m. And lunchtime. So, we have them booked at lunchtime. At lunchtime, too. Awesome. And these are, this is district-wide. There's uh, 150 schools so far that have signed up, and there are st still schools signing up to try and get in. So definitely, if your student can come into that, um, steer them towards that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then the portals. So Mrs. Tizak mentioned that, how important it is. So some families joining tonight might remember that you used to get a letters in the mail, packages, that's more information about colleges and might be flyers, but they're cutting down on a lot of that and also just mainly focusing on mail, uh, emails. Mm -hmm. So please check the portals, especially after you uh, apply to the school. Uh, they will respond with saying, hey, why don't you create an account in our portal? So we will let you know whether you're accepted or not. Also talk to you uh, about any possible scholarships that you might be uh, uh, eligible for, as well as any missing documentations. Mm -hmm. And make sure, as Ms. Ho has in there, check your spam. You don't know how many students will come back and say they never heard from that school. And then we'll say, let's look in your spam. And there the school has emailed them. So definitely check your spam when you are checking your emails regularly. So final thoughts, uh, senior year does count, uh, regardless whether or not it's COVID or not, it definitely count. Um, and all acceptances are provisional. So uh, it means that during the 
last semester, the spring semester of your senior year, if you do not receive the same grades that you have been receiving for the last three years at Aragon, then they do have the right to then revoke your admissions. Okay, so everything is provisional until they receive your transcript to make sure that you passed all your classes and received that, you know, a, a Great, some like some UCs actually require a 3.0 specifically, not just a C or above. Um, please notify any uh, schools of your D's and F's that you received um, ahead of time. They, like Mrs. Tzak said, no surprises. No. Um, again, check your portals and we're here. Mm -hmm. uh, I am here, Ms. Tzak's here. You could email us or you could message us through Canvas. Uh, also, we have office hours, we make appointments. Uh, so we are here and we are available. So that concludes um, our presentation for tonight. Um, I will be here for a little bit more. So to see if anybody might have some <laughs> questions um, in the Q&A and I can definitely try to, act, um, try to answer them. Otherwise, everyone have a wonderful evening. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.